Register Phenomena Code 070 Object Class Omega Red Hazard Types Pending Review Containment Protocols The business owners of fast food establishments within the Burger King brand have been instructed to check their children's play areas for abnormal changes in internal structure. This is to be done at least twice a week. If anomalous behavior is found, it is to be reported to the Authority, and MST Victor 1, Tunnel Vision, is to be deployed to the location. They are to partially deconstruct the RPC 070 instance in order to neutralize the anomalous effect. Afterwards, it can then be reconstructed. In case of remanifestation, staff should continue to check for structural changes even after a neutralization. Description. RPC-070 is a spatial anomaly affecting the fast food restaurant chain Burger King, specifically establishments with a particular type of indoor play area. These play areas consist of a series of colorful tubes, slides, ladders, and other components, combined in a maze-like structure meant to serve as entertainment for customers' children. There is no discernible pattern as to when RPC-070 will appear. RPC-070 only manifests once every several months or years. RPC-070 has never been documented affecting more than a single establishment at once. After manifestation, an RPC-070 affected play area will undergo two distinct stages. The first stage lasts 25 to 30 days. It begins with the internal structure increasing in size vertically and horizontally. The exterior of the play area does not change in size or appearance. This increase in size manifests the slow stretching and morphing of the plastic components within the structure. The creation of rooms and tunnels of varying shapes, sizes, and colors has been observed. They often contain structures reminiscent of a children's jungle gym, such as monkey bars, rope swings, and net floors. After approximately 10 days, the internal structure will have reached a size of roughly 60 cubic meters. Newly formed rooms and tunnels will have begun to take on irregular forms or housing anomalous contents. Some recorded examples include the following. A massive, elliptical room with 500 branching tunnels, each beginning with a circular opening. A pink tube traveling in one direction for 50 meters, without any intersections. A room with walls completely covered in spikes. The size of these spikes range from a few centimeters to half a meter. The spikes were made of dull plastic. An orange, circular tunnel, with a hemispherical window on one side. Through the window, an extremely large room was visible. In the corner, the figure of a humanoid entity was able to be seen. It was in a crouched position, its arms wrapped around its head. A rectangular purple tunnel leading to the opening of what appeared to be an empty elevator shaft. The shaft traveled up and down, neither the top or bottom visible. An object was dropped in. After a few minutes, the object reappeared, falling from the upward part of the shaft. It continued falling, but did not reappear a second time. A turquoise, oval-shaped tunnel that began to shrink towards one end until it could no longer be traveled through, ending with a small hole. Looking through this hole, flashing lights of red, blue, and green were visible. Incoherent whispers became audible at close distances to the end of the tube. By the end of Stage 1, the structure will have reached a size of approximately 3 cubic kilometers. Most of the structure will be far enough from the entrances to be in complete darkness. The beginning of Stage 2 is marked by the appearance of RPC-070-A instances, which are quadrupedal humanoid entities with inverted spines and torsos. The creatures have human-like heads, rotated 180 degrees, and lacking any nasal organs. The entities emerge through small crevices in the tunnels. They have sharp claws, which allow them to obtain a firm grip on the walls. Because of this, 070A instances are extremely agile, able to travel long distances and around corners in the structure, much faster than a human could. 070A instances 
survived by consuming the children that enter RPC-070 affected play areas. In order to remain hidden from any onlooking parents or restaurant staff, the entities remain in areas of darkness. Children naturally avoid these dark areas, often forcing 070A instances to hide behind corners and quickly capture passing targets, taking them away from any potential witnesses. After acquiring a child, an 070A instance will cover the child's mouth in order to muffle any screams until it has traveled deep enough into the structure as to not be heard by outsiders. Once far enough, the entity will consume the child. It first snaps the child's neck in order to paralyze it, then begins to devour chunks of flesh. Once the skin and muscle tissue have been completely consumed, the entity will leave the carcass and return to capture a new child. 070A instances are able to manipulate the environment of the RPC-070 structure. They do this by pressing one hand flat against the surface. Said surface will then slowly change in shape over the course of several minutes. This ability is often used to create rooms to lure, trap, and or kill prey. Complex uses of this ability can take up to several hours. The following are some recorded examples of structures created through this manipulation. A blue slide that became steeper until it reached a vertical drop. This drop was at least 300 meters in height. Three corpses were found at the bottom. A trap door in the floor of a tunnel, with a small space below it. A 078 instance would wait inside this space. Once a child was above, the entity would open the trap door and pull the child in. This method was effective enough to be feasible in areas relatively close to entrances. A small room with a crude drawing of a smiling person on the wall. There was a single doorway into the room with a plastic cover that could be slid up and down over the door. An 070A instance would wait around the corner of the room until a child entered before sliding down the cover. An attempt to deconstruct an RPC-070 instance in order to study its anomalous behavior instantly neutralized the anomaly. The structure returned to its state prior to any anomalous expansion. Entities within the expanded portion of the structure, including 070A instances and several children, disappeared. It is unknown what happened to the entities and children involved. Addendum. On June 16, 2019, an RPC-070 test was approved, in which an RPC-070 affected play area was isolated and allowed to enter its second stage. Infrared cameras and audio recording devices were placed within the structure for remote surveillance. 50-070A instances manifested, designated A-01 through A-50, based on order of initial manifestation. It was found that without human children entering the structure, the 070A instances became cannibalistic. They began to viciously attack one another in order to obtain necessary sustenance. An event transcript is available below. Event Log 070.1 Date June 19, 2019 Experiment Lead Dr. Reichardt Forward All entrances to the structure were sealed prior to any 070A manifestations. All surveillance devices were unnoticed by the entities for the duration of the experiment. Began Log The 50-070A instances have manifested and are pacing through the complex, not interacting with each other. The entities begin to appear agitated as they cannot find any human prey within the structure. At this point, they gradually become more aggressive until the entities are attacking one another directly. A-35 approaches A-12 from behind. A-35 quickly leaps in front of A-12 before decapitating it and consuming the remaining corpse. This is the first death of the experiment. There were no other 070A instances within the area. The RPC-070 structure enters a chaotic state in which any direct interaction between 070A instances leads to the death of at least one of the involved entities. The remaining 33 are capable of avoiding direct interaction, making it increasingly rare for any entity to consume another through direct attack methods. Use of elaborate traps such as false floors and hidden doors become frequent. After four hours, 
19 more entities are killed. The 14 remaining entities are as follows. A01, A03, A06, A15, A17, A22, A26, A35, A36, A37, A42, A44, A47, A50. A-22 is pacing through a long tunnel, as three 070A instances, A-1, A-15, A-42, appear from behind a corner, five meters ahead. The three entities had previously formed a cooperative hunting group, and had killed four other 070A instances. A-22 quickly turns and runs from the group. A-22 quickly, a quickly makes a left turn as the other entities stumble through the narrow tunnel. A-22 leads them towards a large structure, supported by four metal beams. A-22 had constructed this structure two hours prior. A-22 jumps into a square opening on the structure, crawling through a small tube. The three other 070A instances follow A-22 in, entering into a small room. A-22 is within a secondary room, overseeing the other and activates a lever. The walls of the room containing the group begin to compress inward. They rub against the floor, creating an extremely sharp sound. The walls collide, crushing the three 070A instances. A-22 consumes their corpses over the next hour. During this time, and in another section of the complex, A-26 is atop a large pillar, surveying three intersecting tunnels made of transparent plastic. It has been atop the pillar for nearly the entirety of the experiment, only descending when the unsuspecting 070A instance is below. A-26 spots A-17 traveling through one of the tunnels. A-26 prepares to drop from the pillar, but A-17 suddenly stops traveling through the tunnel. A-26 ducks down, attempting not to be seen by A-17. After 20 seconds, A-17 slowly approaches the pillar. It then repeatedly lashes at the pillar until it collapses. A-26 dies on impact with the floor, and A-17 consumes the body. A-22 has now finished consuming the corpses of A-01, A-15, and A-42. A-22 leaves its structure and travels through the complex. After approximately 30 minutes, it finds a massive vertical drop in the floor of a tunnel. A-22 begins to construct a false floor, presumably planning to lure another 070A instance over the hole. As A-22 begins to create a weak panel to place over top the hole, A-36 emerges from a false wall. A-36 had previously constructed the vertical drop, waiting for 070A instances to attempt to build a trap with it. The walls of the drop were made with an extremely slippery material so that the entities could not grip them and climb out. A-36 lunges at A-22 from behind, but A-22 ducks, leading A-36 to land into the drop. A-36 screeches and claws violently at the walls. A thud is heard when A-36 hits the bottom. A-50 comes across the structure A-22 had built and sees A-47 scavenging through the bones of A-01, A-15, and A-42. A-47 is scrawny having eaten very little over the experiment so far. A-50 is able to easily pin A-47 to the ground and snap its neck. A-50 rests within the structure as it consumes A-47. In the opposite side of the complex, A-17 stalks A-03 as it wanders through random intersections. Eventually, A-03 reaches the end of a long tunnel. A-03 turns around and A-17 is waiting at the entrance to said tunnel. A-17 begins to walk into the tunnel, dragging its claws against the wall in an intimidating fashion. Just as A-17 is about to attack, A-03, A-06 appears from behind and slices A-17's legs, amputating both of them. A-06 has been silently following A-17 for several hours. A-06 begins to devour A-17, and A-03 attempts to escape. Without moving its head away from consuming flesh, A-06 slashes A-03 in the throat, causing blood to pour onto the floor. 
A03 stumbles out from the tunnel, but dies of blood loss shortly after. A06 consumes both bodies and then leaves the location to create a trap elsewhere. After approximately 20 minutes of traveling, A37 enters into a massive, torus-shaped tunnel. A partially consumed body, A44, is visible 10 meters ahead. A37 approaches the corpse and begins to consume its flesh before A-06 drops from a hatch in the ceiling. A-37 hesitates, allowing A-06 to quickly slice through A-37's back. A-06 begins to consume A-37 while it is still alive. A-37 drags his left hand and presses it against the ground. A crease begins to manifest, forming a square tile which begins to sink into the floor. After several seconds, A-37, A-06, and the partially consumed body fall into the hole, eventually exiting to a lower section of the structure. A-22 is in this lower area and witnesses the 078 instances land, bursting on impact. A-22 collects the various chunks of bodily matter and carries them to the structure it had built previously. A-35 is visible, following A-22 from behind. At this point, the only living 078 instances are A-22, a-50, and A-35. A-22 approaches the structure and notices A-50 within it. A-22 quietly travels towards a small latch on the underside. It opens the latch before crawling inside. A-35 follows and silently closes the latch from the inside, careful not to alert A-22 of its presence. As A-22 is about to raise the switch, which would activate the crushing machine and kill A-50. A-35 pushes A-22 over a ledge and into the pit with A-50. A-35 then lifts the switch. The walls of the pit begin to move inward. A-22 attempts to use the femur bone of A-42's carcass to jam the machine by shoving it into a crevice between the wall and the floor. The wall begins to stop moving, and A-22 appears relieved before A-50 attacks from behind, completely removing A-22's left leg. A-22 pulls the femur bone out of the wall, winding it back before hurling at A-50. The bone smashes through the side of A-50's head, obliterating its skull. A-50's body becomes limp and falls to the floor. A-35 deactivates the crushing machine. A-35 deactivates the crushing machine and jumps into the pit. A-35 grips A-22's remaining leg and pins A-22 against the wall. A-35 swings its arms, but A-22 swerves its head, avoiding the attack. A-22 presses its hand against the floor. The ground begins to melt. A-35 and A-22 fall through and land at the base. A-22 appears to have been knocked unconscious by the fall. A-35 regains its balance and drags A-22 towards one of the four metal supports. A-35 takes a piece of sharp metal debris and uses it to amputate A-22's right leg. A-22 begins to regain consciousness, but appears dazed and unaware. A-35 places the piece of metal against A-22's neck and begins to slowly slice the flesh. A-22 reflexively jolts backwards, smashing against the support beam. It buckles, destabilizing the structure. Pieces of plastic and a thick dust fill the area as the entire structure collapses onto A-22 and A-35. After thirty seconds, the rebel becomes still. Three hours following this, all entities within the structure are presumed dead, and the test is concluded. End log. Closing statement. The anomaly was neutralized by removing a sheet of plastic from one of the outside tubes. Shortly after, the affected restaurant was allowed to resume normal activity.